Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to Plan C, conversations about craft, creativity and connection. I'm your host, Wendy Stewart, and Michelle is here. She's just behind the scenes taking care of everything, including the comments box. So please pop in and let us know you're watching. We are so excited today. We've taken a little bit of a departure from our usual craft um, guests that we have. And I'm joined today by the amazing Mandy Rigg from Calm Chi Wellbeing. Welcome Mandy to the show. Thank you very much, Wen. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. So Mandy and I have known each other for about eight years. I'm very privileged to call her friend, mentor and healer. Mandy is one of those people. She really is my earth angel. She has been a huge part of my life. She has helped me develop. She has helped me grow and she has helped me heal. And Mandy is, uh, I would like to say, she is just an expert on so many different things. So we just felt we needed to have her in here today and share her with you. And it wasn't real when I first started um being with Mandy I didn't really want to share her with everyone because I wanted her all to myself <laughs> but I thought it's only fair that I get to share the amazing Mandy with you so Mandy's going to tell us a little bit about herself but I'm going to give you a very brief introduction so Mandy is a kinesiologist an intensive care nurse a wellness corporate consultant a functional nutrition coach a qualified Reiki master and a massage therapist isn't that incredible <laughs> her passion is combining the knowledge of all these wonderful modalities to support all of us, her clients, in achieving optimum health, vitality, balance, and living our best lives possible. So once again, now that I've embarrassed her sufficiently, welcome Mandy to the show. Thank you, you made me sound very exciting. <laughs> you I are, you are. <laughs> so Mandy, for those who have never met you before, could you tell us a little bit about, about yourself? I know I've said what you do, but we'd like to know more about you. Okay, so thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. And it's just such a blessing being on this, on this beautiful show with you and with Michelle behind the scenes. Absolutely. Um, as Wen said, I'm a kinesiologist, a, a nutrition coach, I'm an intensive care nurse. So I have a really big balance between Eastern and Western medicine. And a big part of my journey forward is about creating a life that I love and encouraging others to find a life that they love too. So to love the life you live. So that whole part of creativity might not be in craft, but it sure. certainly is in creating an amazing life. So I have a beautiful husband, Dave, and five gorgeous children that are all adult children now, and a divine dog and a love of, of mountain climbing and bushwalking. And uh, I'm just so blessed to be able to share this 40 minutes or so with you oh, and your amazing long. viewers yes. today. Yes, no more than an hour, Michelle, certainly. Oh, I know, right? Because Mandy and I have been known to talk for like hours. A long time. <laughs> so, but yeah, so as I said, I'm incredibly blessed to have this amazing Earth Angel in my life. So if you've noticed on the screen, the beautiful logo that says Calm Chi Wellbeing, there's a bit of a story behind that and I'm going to ask Mandy to share that with you. How did you come up with that name? Well, that's my creative little side oh, to I me. I see, yes, um, exactly. So Calm being that beautiful calm calm energy uh chi being our life force so like we have our blood that carries our oxygen and nutrients to our body our physical life force we have what's called chi or prana um, that is actually part of our energetic life force so it's like the petrol in the car and the actual acronym of calm chi the c-a-l-m-c-h-i is the first initial of each of my children's names so it's Campbell, Ashley, Lachlan, Molly, Callum and then my hunky husband and I. So that's how I came up with it because my husband's name is Dave so that kind of Dave. blew it a little bit so Dave. I had to call him my hunky husband or my heart like or something and I. So that's how I came up with it that and is, it really does represent absolutely what that. I do as well. I think that just embodies you and that beautiful tree that we have all loved for so long that's yes. the tree of life which yes. you and I love and we have many pieces of jewelry and artwork in our homes so I think it all brings it all together and really gives us a sense of who you are yeah thank you yeah yeah so Mandy tell us a little bit about what Calm Chi does please or what you offer sorry through Calm Chi uh, so Calm Chi is a beautiful wellness centre. Um, it did change up a little bit in COVID. The centre's moved to a different area now. And I had to learn and be very creative at putting it online as well, which was very, very scary, um, but was quite successful. And I managed to see lots of people online, face-to-face -face as well, and do some seminars and webinars. Absolutely. So we talk about uh, life in general and bringing your life together as a whole. So looking at your physical health, your emotional health, uh, the energetic health, what you love, what you're passionate about, what you really um, flourish 
in life with like what what makes your heart sing and sort of pull all that together and find the blockages within your body or your mind that may be stopping you from really creating that amazing life so I love working with that area and with people in that area and just seeing people really flourish and really shine so bringing that eastern and western modality together and the food that we that we eat as well so yeah. um, and the energy of Reiki bringing that Absolutely. beautiful Reiki energy in too so it's kind of a a bit of a tailored package it depending is, yes. on, on who you are and what you're after. Absolutely. Mm. So we will have details of how you can contact Mandy at the end of the show. And once again, if there's any questions you have, please pop them in the comments section. Michelle's going to pass us questions possibly on a piece of paper so Mandy or I could help you. And if you have any later, please pop back into the comments and ask them there, Mandy, and I will definitely go back definitely, and answer yeah. them. So Mandy, we were talking about, you know, this is a plan C and it's craft, create, connect. We were talking about connection and creativity mm. and you and I were saying how important creativity is yeah. for our every day, especially in a COVID world or in a post COVID yeah. world. So I'd love you to elaborate a little bit on that and then we can talk about that. Okay. So I'm not sure how everybody felt when the whole COVID struck, as they say, COVID hit seems to be the term yeah. that everybody uses, yeah. but I know that it changed all of our lives actually worldwide, not Definitely. just Australia wide or Victoria wide, but worldwide. And I think what it did, well, I know what it did, is it really got a lot of people uh, into creating different ways of living their life. So for some of us, we were put into isolation. We could do the only 5K from home. We weren't allowed to go anywhere unless it was to buy food, yeah. that kind of thing. It was really challenging. We couldn't see friends and family, and yeah. that came up with all sorts of different challenges. Yeah. But amazingly so, people were uh, put their little creative hats on and worked out ways to stay connected. So via Zoom calls and yeah, champagne breakfasts <laughs> over Zoom and, and these beautiful craft groups that you guys run absolutely. with your cards and things like that. So COVID itself, I think, really brought about an opportunity for change and opportunity for growth an opportunity to create a life that you really truly do want, that we sort of were able to cull back all the stuff that, that doesn't matter anymore. It was almost taken away from us, to be honest. And do we bring it all back in and just keep going the way we were going? Or do we decide what really matters and what doesn't and to be able to flourish and to grow those areas that really do matter to us and to sort of say goodbye to the parts that maybe we were holding on to that weren't really filling our, sure. our soul really were they they definitely, were just kind of definitely. filling a space and that space is so precious so yeah that's what I, I found with COVID that really yeah. got people really definitely. sort of culling back yeah. and, and growing in a different way yeah and as I, and I said to you last year and this year as well I embraced my art again yeah I, it was always there you know I always made cards did a couple of scrapbook pages now and then bit of art journaling but having go into going into such strict lockdown in Melbourne like mm. we were you couldn't go any more than five kilometers. No. You just kind of retreated into yourself. And I always say that I found myself through art again. You know, did some amazing classes online with artists from all over the world and Australia, which normally mm. I wouldn't be able to get to. I was able to connect with these people. You know, I call some of them friends now. Mm. And it was just, yeah, really tapping into that inner part of, you know, your deep, deep resources of your soul and see what's there seeing what's important, seeing, you know, what is really, what really matters in your life and eliminating the things that possibly don't serve you well and you mm. needed to let go of. And coming back to art, it was just, you know, my art journals. I mean, I'd finished, used up, you know, two and a half art journals, which are quite thick. For me, that was incredible. I never thought I'd ever finish one, never mind mm. about two. But, you know, and I know you've done creative things in the past, like quilting and embroidery. And, and it was more about the connection that I got with groups like, you know, Art Paper Craft Posse that Michelle has created. And doing the online shows and other groups that I'm part of. And it was just incredible to have that connection, whether it was weekly or daily or just even a message online. Someone was always there. Yeah. Someone was always listening. You were not alone. No. And for many of, you know, I know many people who live by themselves who don't have possibly a partner or spouse or children or, you know, people to come in and out of their house or even to be with on Zoom. I found that they would come to our craft groups connect and not be alone and have that sense of purpose sense of connection and as i said to you as and michelle earlier you know it gave us a reason to get up okay maybe stay in our pajamas if you pajama come pants, to, pajama the, top pants on the top, the top yeah <laughs> like business on the top party yeah, on the yeah. bottom yep yeah. and you know brush your teeth wash your hair get ready and sit there and be connected to people like-minded people and Michelle was talking to Mandy and I earlier and also said there's a lot of people out in our craft world who possibly don't have other friends who craft so 
these online groups are a great way to connect and meet like-minded people and get going. And you did that, Mandy, so well because you got your Calm Chi family together. Mm. You ran online workshops. You ran online meditation. And I know for you, technology, you know, da- it was daunting. It was daunting. It was yes, daunting, it but was. you pivoted. Yes. You yes, moved your business online. You did healings I did. online. I did, And yes. would you share a little bit about that experience? Because I know it was like, you it know, I get the test stressful. emails and I'm like, Mandy, you could do it. You could do anything. I had to create yeah. a whole yeah. online booking service and that yeah. literally <laughs> gave me a bit of chest pain. Yeah. I was really sort of pushed into doing that, which was wonderful. And it's the best thing I've ever done. I don't know why I resisted for so long. <laughs> um, but also just being able to create new ways of connecting with people. Um, yeah. I was always just face-to-face, one-on-one, or I ran retreats or group workshops uh, face-to-face. So I was able to do more of that online and to connect to people all over the country and all over the world, which was just absolutely wonderful. And in a time of isolation, people sort of felt as though you were still in their homes, you were still with them, uh, you still cared about them. And to create that ability to sort of bring the aspect of what once was into what now is and look at the endless possibilities of what's ahead for us um, was something that I really tried to hold dear to my heart and try to educate other people. So we look at that that figure eight or that creative and we look at your beautiful husband's business name which is Platinum Creative. Platinum Creative. And he has the eight in there and if you turn that eight onto its side, it is the infinity symbol. And if we bring our lives back to balance through creative endeavors, be it through cards and scrapbooking, be it through just creating a, a life for yourself, creating a beautiful meal, creating a, a, an eating plan that supports your health, creating a space yeah. where you can breathe, where you feel like you belong, where you feel loved, where you feel welcome, all those kinds of things uh, is something that, that you can do yourself and that you can bring your tribe into when you decide what that tribe looks like um and i really think that covid gave us that space definitely uh, and now we've got to continue that on absolutely and yeah. i think some of our tribes changed through covid definitely you know maybe yeah. we were no longer part of some and maybe we found new tribes and maybe we created new tribes to you know enhance our lives give up or give us what we needed mm. like i'm sure our needs changed as covid changed as the year changed definitely i know this was the last week of last year where things were normal everything started to shut down next week Mm. and i know i had just come back from india from my uncle's funeral and i chose to self-isolate for no reason no one told me to Uh, first of all i needed time to grieve and to you know process everything that had happened Mm. but then i also was aware that i'd been on a plane i'd been in a foreign country i stayed home for two weeks and before the end of that two weeks the government officially locked us down. Mm. So I had two weeks extra with the lockdown and I was like, oh God, no, I don't want to do that. But it was like, you go back within yourself, you find out what's really important, you work on it. And Mm. I have said, and I've said to other people, you know, through Wendy's way, and I'm sure I've said this to Michelle, COVID was, sorry, I've got to stop talking about COVID. Lockdown Mm. was like the honeymoon Duncan and I never had. We got to just be together, be at home. We weren't rushing everywhere. The rushing stopped. Mm. That's what I noticed. Okay, yeah. I couldn't go anywhere besides 5Ks. So I was like, I don't have to rush to the gym. I don't have to rush to breakfast. I don't have to rush to wherever I was going or rush for work or anything like that. I was like, I love the slow pace of the morning. And I'm an mm. early riser. I think you are too. Mm. And you do crazy things like go for a run. I mean, why? I don't, <laughs> I don't get that about this dear friend of mine. But anyway, each to their own. I'm all for that. I'm more or let's go to the gym and pump up some weights and, you know, put on some, I don't know, some boppy music and like, you know, blast the place out when no one's there. But it was like, okay, I have time to stop, slow down, have a ritual, have Mm. my lemon water, do my meditation, write in my journal, just take a look around, literally stop and smell the roses that were in my front garden. And I was like, when we came out of being in lockdown, I was like, I don't know if I really like this. Mm. I'm not sure that I want to go rushing back. And I haven't. Duncan and I have been very mindful of what we've brought back into our life, what we've allowed back into our life and how busy we've let ourselves be. And we've just stopped the overscheduling. So I don't know about yeah. you. And I know when you have your business like you do and I do and Michelle does, it's really hard because you've got to do the business things that must be done every week, every day. Mm. But I like to think that it's a much more calmer, like the calm chi kind of calmer yeah. way of approaching everyday life. So do you feel that as well? Or? Well, I think that's what 
I guess everyone keeps talking about COVID and COVID's been this big thing for the last 12 months. But my thing is now is what's now? What, where do we go from here? Um, how does life change? Do we jump straight back into what we were doing 12 yes, months before or do yes. we just slowly work our way in? And as I said before, leaving behind the things that don't really connect with you anymore and creating new ways in your life that really allow you to flourish and really allow you to to um, open your heart and to love the life you live which is my little tagline so um, I guess I'm asking you now to sort of think about what those things are that really mean something to you that really touch your heart that are really important Um, is it your health is it are you suffering with chronic health conditions Um, do you feel isolated do you feel like you don't have a tribe or do you feel like you would like to find a tribe in some way Um, what is it that you love and what is it that you really love like deep down not what you think you love or what is kind of easy to do because you were told you should do it or you can do it but um, it's interesting I was speaking to someone yesterday and and, um, I asked him at the time what makes your heart sing and he said I would love to learn how to dance and I said well go and do it And he's only a young man. I said, go and do it. And uh, he's probably my age, actually. He's probably about in his 40s or 50s. And um, I said, would that be ballroom dancing or something like that? He said, no, hip hop. I'm like, get out there. Go do your hip hop, you know. And it really blew me away because I just did not see him as that kind of person. (laughs) But when you really dig deep. You don't know though, do you? No, but when you really dig deep and you're really honest with yourself and you look at what's going on around you and you think, I'd love to be able to do that. I'd love to show my beautiful creative flair by being an amazing chef or cooking an incredible cake or dancing the hip hop or whatever it might be, that's what makes your heart sing. And to create that life that you want to live is so incredibly important. And remember, it's your life. It's not the life of your mum or your dad or your belief systems or your kids or we all have things that that kind of mould us. But I think this is a really good time to really a step back and look at what it is that really makes your heart sing and what it is that's going to make you flourish and to create that space for yourself don't worry what the rest of the world have to say just be the gorgeous amazing you that you are yeah absolutely and I always say on you know every opportunity I get on this amazing show it's like you know find that find that space create that space for yourself Mm. I say you know go in your even if you don't have a craft studio or an art studio or just grab a piece of paper splash some paint around swatch something just if you don't know what to do just go and grab one of your supplies and just you know put it on a piece of paper see what it does on that piece of paper and I think it's really important about creating you talked about creating that ritual whether it's light a candle and sit down to eat your evening meal even mm, if, even if you're yes. by yourself even yep. if, if with partner with children whatever yeah creating that ritual and for me it's like creating i literally put a timer on for 30 minutes and go and sit in my art studio i don't always have a plan i might you know only have 30 minutes to work on something and sometimes it's longer than 30 minutes but you know it's like go in there grab an art journal sketch something draw get a piece of paper you know, cut it up, do a collage, start a collage, grab paint, do anything. The important thing is you've got to honour yourself enough to give yourself that space. It's so important because if you don't look after yourself, no one's coming to help you. I can tell you that right now. Mm. This lovely lady has taught me that many, many times over the years. It's like embrace the precious present that you're in, Mm. our beautiful, precious present. Embrace where you're at. Like right now, I'm so honoured that she's sitting next to me. Michelle's over there. We're doing this. We created the space to make this happen. Michelle created the space to make Plan C happen. We worked on it together. It came out of an idea from the online shows last year, but it's mm. all—it's all about evolving, pivoting, doing it. If you had ever told me Mandy would go online and do things online, I'd go, "Yeah, of course she can," knowing how scary it was for you, but you did it. And I think, I, for me, it's sometimes scary—you know—not feeling guilty about giving myself that thirty minutes in my art studio, with phone off, no interruption. You know, hubby's doing something else, but it's like I know that if I don't go in there and splash something around and make some mess. I'm not going to be a happy girl. So mm. and after last year and having hours and hours to do days to do it, you know, not moving out of the art studio, actually moving the art studio to our formal dining room, as you saw, taking over, being in, you know, bringing that into our lives because that's what was keeping us going. And it was mm. like, I honoured that. I knew I needed that. I knew my mental health would not survive without it. And mm. I knew I had to do that. So I'm asking you and I'm honouring you as well to say, to say, Honor yourselves. Go and give yourself. Set a timer, even fifteen minutes. Mm. Go into go and grab something, splash some color around, and just do it. 
as Mandy said, your life, make it the best one that you can. Would Definitely. You, would you? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And whether it be colour, whether it be anything, anything yep. just to create yep. that space. Yeah, absolutely. And it is hard. It is challenging, you know, for those of us that are very busy out there. Most yeah. most people tend to be and um, it's almost a badge of honour to be busy. Um, <laughs> yes. It really is. You know, people say, how's, yeah. how's life? How are you? Oh, flat out no. busy. And they go, oh, yeah, me too, you yeah. know. Yeah. And for us to turn around and to say to somebody, oh, you know, nothing. I've sat and, and done my craft all week yeah. and yeah. done nothing at all. We sort of had permission for that and now we no longer do. But you can still give yeah. yourself that permission. Yeah. Um, it's about balance. It's about bringing life back into balance and, and trying to find that space. For sure. And it's about balance, but it's also about flow. It's yes, definitely, definitely about flow. And we said we were going to talk about flow. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, for me, it's like, you know, you've definitely, yes, you have to go to business meetings. You have to do your bass. You have to meet the accountant. You have to pay the bills. You have to do the groceries. I get all of that. But you also have to be in flow while you're doing these things. Yeah. Because otherwise, I think you're going to crash and burn. Well, creativity doesn't happen when you force it. You try and make something look good. You you try and push yeah. something to happen. Whereas when your heart's open and when those creative juices yeah. are flowing, things just do happen. Things just and energetically, um, things come to you. That like attracts like with energy. Uh, when you're in that space and your energy is at a certain vibration, we attract more things at certain vibrations. So when everything sort of seems to be going well, people say you have the Midas touch. Yeah. When everything seems to be going um, not so well, it's all, all everything bad always happens to me. And when you believe that, yeah. you get more of that. So what you focus on, you attract. Yeah. So if you're focusing on being in flow and just allowing and um, absorbing that beautiful yeah. energy, um, you'll just create whatever it is you want to create. Space, time, um, craft, yeah. food, connection, um, anything really. Yeah. It's and just a matter of being So in many space. people just, you know, went back to really simple things like making things from scratch. First of all, because you couldn't get possibly get the things in the supermarket you wanted, just say to make a cake, right? Some of us are not cake makers, some of us are, some of us are not. <laughs> so some of us are cake eaters, some of us make it. So, you know, that's the way it is. But it's like, well, what do I, what do I have? I'm going to do the best with what I have. I'm going to make do with what's in my pantry or in my art studio mm. and just go with it. And I think last year gave us all that permission to just mm. go within and just, you know, make the cake from scratch or not. You know, if you had so, a packet yeah. mix, go for it. Who cares? So moving like, forward, yeah, what are we going to do? It's about keeping on doing that and creating that Absolutely. beautiful space for yourself. So, so just think about what it is you'd like to create. Think about things in your life that perhaps you yeah. haven't created yet, but you'd like to do. Do you want to be a hip hop dancer? Do you want to do something different? Do you want to do a different type of art class? Um, do you want to create time for that art class? Yeah. Do you just feel like you want to breathe in that space, whatever it might be? You know, I'm giving you permission. If you need it, I'm giving you permission yeah. that it is important that if you don't work, nothing else is going to work anyway. So it's time to put that love and that time back into you. And I, and I think the other thing is we've got to teach the gener generations that are to come, ones younger than us, and possibly mm. even the, you know our own generation and ones older, how to create that space, how to mm. create space for creativity, mm. how to bring whatever, whether it's, you know, playing a guitar or doing an art journal page or making a card or baking a cake mm. or planting a garden. I know so many people who planted gardens last year. Yeah, and veggies, amazing. Yeah, beautiful veggies. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And they found, you know, they were green thumbs. Mm. I'm not, but, you know, I appreciate those who are. And shared with me. So, you know, I have other skills that I could do that. You know, I could help them set up a Zoom call or I could show them how to be on Zoom or how to set up a Facebook Live. That's my, that's what I know how to do. Mm. So it was all about sharing our skills and helping each other really thrive and flourish in that environment we were placed into mm. last year, wouldn't you say? Definitely. Yeah, Most absolutely. Definitely so. so, Mans, just going back to your beautiful um, business that is Count Chi, mm -hmm. I know there might be a lot of people who've never heard of some of the modalities we talked about. Could we briefly talk about each of those modalities and you can tell people what you, yep. what you do? So I know... Sure. From the Western medicine side of things, you were an ICU nurse, and mm -hmm. I know you worked in the ambulance ambulance for a while. Yeah, but then you've yep. also embraced the Eastern side of things. With, That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love you to speak a little bit about that, please. Okay, sure. So as Wen said, I've been done the Western side of things and still do as an ICU nurse and uh, retrieval. Mm -hmm. 
um, in, a, in the ambulance as where I've been so working So you go and get patients time. and bring them to hospital? Is yeah, so we do, do yeah. um, um, transport intensive care oh, patients right. yes. Um, yes. Yes. from country to the city and sure. things like that. Sure. Yep. 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 Um, and then I went probably about 15 years ago, I went back to school and I always had a knowing or a, uh, an understanding of, of more of the Eastern medicine practice, but just really wanted to start to learn more about it. So I studied a modality called kinesiology, which is very Chinese medicine based. So we're looking at, as I said before, the chi of the body. Yep. And so when we often feel stuck in life or unable to move forward in things or to create things in our life or when we, when we have different disease processes that we're trying to work through or we just can't quite get on top of them, sometimes it comes down to having a blocked energy line or an energy field. So as an example, if you wanted to use a car as an example, um, the engine in the car, underneath the bonnet of the car, is this perfectly tuned new engine, but there's a bit of a, a block in the fuel line. So the, the tank's full, the engine's okay, but the actual fuel getting to the engine yeah, isn't quite right. I love that right. analogy. So I if we that. can sort of clear that bit of a blockage in that fuel line, then the engine can r- run properly. And that's how our body works from that energetic perspective. And sometimes the things that are actually blocking the energy lines are emotional traumas, um, belief systems, old belief systems that have come down through the generations and belief systems that have occurred within our, in, in this lifetime for us and just different parenting beliefs that we're given, uh, all sorts of uh, bits and pieces, really anything that can actually cause blockages in there. Sometimes it's allergies and food problems, uh, physical diseases, that kind of thing. So if we can clear those energy lines out, it allows the body the best opportunity that it can have to heal. So that's the kinesiology part of it. Yeah. Um, and then I bring my Western medicine yes. knowledge into that understanding disease processes and being able to work through um, what's yes. actually physically wrong and then the energetic understanding of that as well. And then on the other side of that, we bring in the beautiful abundance of food and real food, yeah. um, live food, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, some meats and things like that, but food that has a life force yeah. that is healing, so not packaged food and that kind of thing. So looking at um, the vibration of food, I often say to my kids when I make this beautiful green salad out of our garden, I'll say to them, Shh, what's that noise? And they'll go, oh, mum. <laughs> And I'm like, it's your body singing. It's your heart. Look at you. You're singing. You've got all these greens coming into your body. And they're like, oh, boring like this. <laughs> but that's what they say. So I often will say that oh, to them loose. from when they were really little, even up till now. And you'll even see them at the table as soon as I'll say, shh, what's that? And they're now 29, 27. They all go, oh straight away so um but it does you know when you have a really healthy meal how much better you feel for it rather than having a big truckload of fish and chips and too many beers on a saturday night or whatever you pay for it the next day so it's being able to really um balance up our food and have great food most of the time there's always that 90 10 rule or 80 20 rule or whatever you want to call it yes um but most of the time eating that really beautiful food so working at with food as a functional aspect so how food functions in the body and how the, the food can make your body function better. Yes. So we clear out energy lines and we put in the good fuel. Yes. So we've got nice, good um, premium diesel rather than just the cheap diesel like that. goes into the, <laughs> into the tank. We've got a nice, clean um, energy line there. And then we start working on the actual physical body as well. So And then working with the Reiki energy, which is a beautiful yeah. healing vibrational energy as well. So there's a whole combination that we can pull together there. And I use essential oils and I make my own beautiful sprays to help balance. Which are behind, and sorry, to, going that way. Which oh, are yep, behind me. Behind yep. on the shelf there. Yep. Um, and just really tailor and target exactly what it is that you're wanting to work on so that you can just get on with your life and, and be healthy and, and be the best version of you. So that's sort of how I've pulled my two worlds absolutely. together. And I absolutely love it. I just love it. Yeah. I and really Mance, do. I feel do very you, lucky. Do you, do you, sorry, I beg your pardon. That's okay. Do you still offer massa- remedial massage as well? Do you do um, that or I not don't so do much? that so no. much. Yeah, yeah, I am a remedial massage yeah. therapist, but... Um, my my journey's sort of taken me more into yeah. the the eastern western modalities more Definitely. so than the mas- massage. Most of my clients now um, are clients that need what I've just des- what I've just described to you. Sure. The odd person I give a massage to, but it's not something that I no, really promote no. so much anymore. And, and I can tell you that Mandy's each healing is unique. It's tailored to the person in the room yeah. and what they need. And I know, like I go in thinking this is what I need today, and then. My body will tell Mandy, no, that's not what she needs. She needs something else. So I've taken to just walking in there and go, hi, I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> tell me what I need. Yeah. So, you know, you've got, to, you've got to trust your practitioner. You've got to trust the process. You've got to be in flow. You've got to let Mandy use her creativity and all her knowledge 
help you in that mm. session. So, and you're very p- much part of that session too. It's not yeah, something yes. that I. It's yes. not something that I prescribe. It's not prescriptive. Mm. It's not something that I'll sit there and say, right, you have to do this, this, and this. It's a journey that we that we're on together, and that yeah. we discover together. And it's always got to work for you. So. Um, that's the bit I really love and it it. always does so you know Mandy would you like to talk about the sprays behind me as I grab them I I just thought it would be really good excuse us just so I've created four this is my creativity so I can't draw for peanuts I can't create your beautiful cards and all the stuff you do if I hold that one to the camera yeah yeah Michelle is that good please Mandy would you talk about that one please okay so that's called embrace your space so all four of the sprays are are made with um energetic medicine they have essences crystal essences in there as well as um essential oils and beautiful reiki energy so each of them has a different uh, need or a, a requirement that you would use it for one of them is about space clearing so trying to clear any of that negative energy that might be in your space that's if that one is things it, are that's? feeling a little yep. bit Embrace bit flat yeah yeah yep. yep. um yep. then we have one that's for chakra energy so we have seven energy centers that run down through the center of our spine known as chakras and um this particular spray has been created to help strengthen the chakras the chakras themselves are vortexes of spinning energy that when they're nice and strong and spinning um spinning free and and strongly that our actual energy of our body is nice and strong as well we feel nice and vitalized so that's for that one Um, that one is a healing heart so for people that have been through a lot of heart trauma that's a really beautiful spray to just help to sort of settle and help to heal the heart very very beautiful very gentle and then this this one I created this year (laughs) yeah this was one that I really felt I needed to create in that um, year of last year that COVID year Um, it's called lift your spirits and it doesn't just lift your vibration by making you feel better it's nice and bright and fresh um, but it also helps to lift the energetic vibration so it's wonderful to help with the body healing because dis-ease is a low or low energy or a low vibe um, whereas health and wellness is more of a high vibe so and that whole vibe thing is around when you're when you're with people that are in your tribe you usually have that good vibe and (laughs) if there are people that aren't so great that you sort of feel a bit yuck around that usually sort of lowers the vibe so that's sort of one is more of a disease um, uh, creating yes. and one's more of a health creating, yeah. that high vibe. So, And yeah. I know you also use um, aromatherapy and essential oils in your mm-hmm. practice. Yeah. And I know we've talked about, especially when I'm going to be creative, mm. I know there are specific essential oils that I burn in my art room in a diffuser Yes. Or I make a roll on, and it really lifts my spirits. It really gives mm. me energy, helps my creativity unlock and flow. And I think, you know, lemongrass is a great one for me, or Definitely. the orange, or the citrus, or. And I know you use essential oils and crystals as well. Yes. And I've got those in my art studio, which you help me identify what I, you know, would work for me. And they're just incredible. So Mandy's mm. just got all these amazing, amazing abilities. And these Thank amazing you. talents that she shares with each one of her clients. And I, I don't think you're a client. You become a friend and, you know, she takes you under her wing and protects you and nurtures you, but pushes you when you need to be pushed and makes <laughs> you see some real, you know, makes you see things for what they really are. And, you know, what I with love. lots of love. Well, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Quit. She'll kick your butt with lots of love. <laughs> I don't know how is else that to possible? Say. Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. No, it is. It yeah. is. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for her, um, what can I say now? I'm going to get all emotional. But I'm going to, no, it's, try again. Wait, no. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her knowledge, her wisdom, her patience with me and kicking my butt when I needed it and helping me. I don't think I would have ever created Wendy's Way or walked away from the corporate world and embraced the creative part of my brain and my being and my soul. And she's helped me find out who I really am and what really makes me tick. And I'm so Thank grateful you. for that. So I would love to encourage you all to... Please, if you're in Melbourne, or even if you're not in Melbourne, Mandy can do online consults. Absolutely, so yeah. I'd love to, as just before we finish up, please tell everyone where they can find you, how they can find you, and how they can make a time to come and see you, whether in person yep. or online. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you're very welcome to call my number that's on my website. So yeah. the website is calmchiwellbeing.com.au. Yeah. Um, there is a number on there. You're very welcome to call and have a chat with me if you're wanting to see whether what I do is for you. Um, there's also a book now button on there and I do have a Facebook page and Instagram page as well. Look at you go. 
Oh, no, no. <laughs> Who am I? Do I know how to use them? Probably yes, not. Yes, you me. do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, Mandy, do gets, Mandy gets these messages from me going, you haven't posted on Insta for a while. Do you I think know. you might want to post? So, anyway, no, no. I'm getting We'd there. love, we'd I'm love, but we're all in this together. That's so, right. Takes a know. village. Yeah, see, I can kick your butt back too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Takes a village. So Mandy, they can yeah. find you through your website. Mm-hmm. Now, you also have a Facebook page, which is Come to Wellbeing. Yes. Yep. yep. And, and same with Instagram. I know, that freaks you out, right? And there's Instagram. And there is an old-fashioned phone number but you can actually call Mandy. You She'll can. actually answer your call. I'll actually call. talk to you. She'll actually talk to you in person <laughs> yeah. or you can text her or you can message her to just see if there's something Mandy can do to help you, whether it's in person in Ringwood in Melbourne. Yes. It's part of the beautiful Ringwood Medical Centre, which is on Ringwood Can- Medical Health Centre. R- yeah. yeah, Ringwood Medical Health yeah. Centre, which is on Canterbury Road. So it's yeah. just off East Link. So if you're anywhere near East Link, it's really easy to find. So mm-hmm. and Mandy can always help you with, you know, what you might need or at least for an initial consultation and mm. then take it from there and Unblock see what your you creativity. need. creativity. There you go. <laughs> and the other great thing I've got to tell you is it's always up to us as to when we go back to see Mandy. Mandy never forces. There's no pressure. You know, I've gone months without seeing her, which is very unusual for me. But, mm. you know, I know when I need to go and Mandy knows too. And it's just, you know, I have lots of family and friends who see Mandy and we are all blessed to be in her care and she's Thank just you. an incredible healer practitioner friend mentor and everything so mandy once again what's your website can't she yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah i look so forward to seeing you i really that do. would be wonderful and if there's any Thank questions you. if you're watching on replay and if there's any questions please pop them in the comments and we will make sure mandy sees them and can answer them or michelle or i will answer them to the best mm-hmm. of our ability yep. well it's been my absolute pleasure to bring this episode of plan c to you to have the amazing Mandy here with us and Michelle behind the scenes taking care of all of us. Thank you. There's a few comments I can see from here. Michelle, hello. Donna, thank you. Hello. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We've really had a great a great episode today, as we always do. Michelle and I will be back next Friday for Plan C. Don't forget the Bendigo show is not far away. For all the information, make sure you've gone to the Picture to Page and Beyond website. Sign up for updates. Michelle, they can buy tickets online now, I'm assuming. Yep, tickets for Bendigo are online. Please go. It's going to be a great show. Um, Go and support all our lovely local local retailers who are coming up from Melbourne and all parts of Victoria to be there. It's going to be incredible. Michelle and I will be back next Friday for another exciting exciting edition of Plan C. (laughs) Forget my words. So this is me, Wendy, saying bye for now. Look after yourselves and be kind to yourself as always. And thank you again, Mandy, for being here. Bye, everyone. Bye.